I'm your co-host, Marty Finn, and I have the pleasure of being joined right now in our studio by Synthony Marshall, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. Welcome to the studio, Cynthia. Thank it is you. so good to have you here. Oh, it's good to be here, Marty. Congratulations on a wonderful presentation on our main stage. Oh, thank you. I love this conference. So much energy. This it, is crazy. And we're just getting started. Oh, it's we're like crazy. a couple hours in. Oh, my God. Wonderful. It's crazy. All right. So we've sourced some questions from our viewers. Okay. And so we'll go through a couple here, but I got to ask first. So okay. you just came out of a conference where you had 4,500 people on their feet dancing. Yes. And so I got to know clearly, you love music. Yes. I and love music. you lead a sports organization. Yes. What's your walk-on song? What Ain't song? No Ain't, Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no mountain high enough. High enough. Yes. All right. The Michael McDonald version. I was just gonna. Are we going Diana Ross version? Are we going Michael McDonald? Michael like, McDonald version. Okay. And then sometimes the Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell version. Okay. Because Diana Ross, love Diana Ross. Uh -huh. But I like the, the energy. That one's kind of slow. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. how you kind of end the evening. That's a walk-off song. Yeah, that's the end of the evening. All right. But Michael McDonald, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Oh yeah, I love it. And I love that because it just gives a message yeah. that no matter what's going on, we have to be there for each other. Yeah. And so if you call me, I'll be there. And that's what this is all about. We are literally here for each other. I love it. Great message. Great yes. song. Yes. All right. So switching gears a little bit, one of the questions we got from our viewers was, some, what are some tips you have for female leaders who are either starting an in an industry or working in an industry that's been historically dominated by men? Well, first of all, what I would say is really get to know the industry. Okay. Uh, results matter. So get to know the industry, get to know what it's all about, get to know who the players are, do your homework and prepare. People cannot argue with results. They cannot argue when you are what I call delivering the goods. Yep. So understand the industry, understand what your particular job is, understand what you have to deliver and then bring it. Get some mentors. So I always say you have a board of directors and that's four people. You have people who will push you to your limits, yep. uh, people who will lift you up and just keep you encouraged, people who would mentor you. So those are like uh, your trainers that get you ready for the game. People to learn from. And then your sponsors. Those are people like your agents who actually will put their reputations on the line to get you into uh, that uh, job that you want. So have a personal board of directors and know your stuff. Yeah. No, I think it's really interesting. We talk a lot. I mean, I've heard the term personal board of directors mm -hmm. a lot, but I think what you honed on is really the makeup of that board yes. of directors and the yes. role that those people play, Yes. much like a basketball team, exactly. for example. And they each have a role to play. And what I like to do, I have those people in my life and I have, I've had that for years. Yeah. And about once a year, I like to get them all together. Oh, I like to okay. sit down and get them all together because they know what role they are playing. Yeah. And then get them together so then they can talk, give me advice, I can talk to them. It's an amazing dinner. It's That's an amazing pretty, dinner. a little Cynthia symposium, if you will. Yes, like, and you know, they're honest. I mean, so because yeah. if you're talking to that lifter too much, right. then maybe that lifter can talk to the pusher and say, okay, but here, and the pusher can talk to the lifter and say, yeah, but here's where I'm also pushing her. So it's good for them to talk to. Yeah. That's got to be it. That's a really great idea to bring yeah. them all together. Oh, yes, too. yes. Fantastic. Yes. Oh, I love rarely that. do you get them all at once. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Um, so sticking on the theme of like team and the roles people play. Yes. What's a lesson that you've learned or that's been learned on the court that you think applies off the court? And we just talked about it, I think, to know your position. Okay. Uh, because everybody had, you know, you practice certain positions. You have to be able to deliver on your position. Yeah. You have to be where you're supposed to be. I mean, if, a, if the ball is being passed and you're not there to get it, then the other team is going to get it. So you got to be where you're supposed to be, know your position, and deliver what you're supposed to deliver. And once you do that, because you know the game plan, you got to right. have a game plan. Once you know where you where you fit into that game plan, you got to bring it because other people are depending on you. You can't decide one day, okay, I'm not going to do that job. I'm going to do this job over here. Right. I'm supposed to be in this swim lane, but now I'm going to swim over there. You can't do that because, I mean, if you just take a normal swim team, sure. I mean, if you get out of your lane, you're getting disqualified. Yeah. The whole team gets the squad. Right, so right. So you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Know your position. So something you mentioned just in your keynote on the main stage there, uh, you had a phrase, education matters, zip code doesn't. Mm -hmm. And along the lines of that, imposter syndrome. Yes. So something that I think a lot of people deal with. Yes. Um, I'd love to know from you, like, were there any moments where you felt that or maybe even a moment of apprehension where you're walking into an environment and you feel like I have all these expectations of me right now and can I deliver on that? Yes. A good friend of mine, Joyce Roche, actually wrote a book, the, uh, the Empress Has No Clothes. And it's about 
The and Empress has no has clothes? Has no clothes. Okay, she okay. She used to be uh, the lead director on the board of directors at AT&T, amazing woman. And, when I, and I had to interview her one time for a fireside chat, and I said, okay, let me read this book because I don't think I've ever had the imposter syndrome. Yeah. But what I realized is that I have had times where I just felt, mm, do I know everything I need to know? Yeah. Am I yeah. prepared enough? Have I really done enough homework? Are these people going to think that, you know, I really am the right person for this job? Right. So I've never really been afraid yeah. that I wasn't going to be able to deliver, but I'm a big person on, pre person on preparation, so that's where I struggle sometimes. Have I prepared enough? So how do you work through that then for yourself? Well, I look at the agenda. I think about, you know, what the team is going to be talking about, what, what we're going to be doing that day. Yep. And then I just kind of go through, okay, everything I've read, everything I've looked up. Is there another video I need to go and look up? And, and sometimes you can over-prepare. Yeah, But I would sure. rather be over-prepared than under-prepared. So that's how I deal with it. 100%. I just make sure by the time I walk in there, I think I'm ready. If somebody else doesn't think I'm ready, that's their problem. Yeah. If I think I'm ready and I know I'm ready then you just deal with it if you don't think I'm ready. I, all right, I'm with you. So if I could play that back to you, then I think my big takeaways from that would be one, pre preparation yes. is key to overcoming Huge. any feeling of apprehension. Huge. And what preparation looks like for you could be different yes. based on what you, your level of comfortabil comfortability is or what yes. situation you're walking into. Exactly, exactly. And be prepared for challenges. Yeah. Because some people will just challenge you, especially sometimes being a woman. or right. And it's not just being a woman. Sometimes being new to a position, people will just challenge you. Yeah. And so you have to kind of say to yourself, how am I going to deal with those challenges? Right. Is this a particular meeting where I'm going to walk in and kind of suck it up? It doesn't mean you're weak. Right. But you're just going to take the high road, which sure. is usually the road least traveled. Okay. Sure. So I uh -huh. like to take the high road. Sure. Or you're going to come in there and say, okay, in this meeting, I need to be a little forceful and I need to let them know I'm here. I try to do all that before I even walk in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And really have like your challenge mindset. I'm Love focused that. when I'm walking. I know what I'm getting ready to do. Yeah, it's game yeah. time. Well, and you can't like throw me off too much. I mean, now and then, sure, but not too sure, much sure. because it's game time. You prepare for the game. All right. Yeah. I love that. Um, so to switch gears a little bit, um, and you're very open with your life, which I just love. Yes. And it's, it's such a sense of vulnerability that even I can feel sitting here with you. Yes. And I think it's so important as a leader. Um, you've had so many excess, successes in your life to be proud of, but also challenges and losses that you're very open with. Yes. How do you balance the, those losses or disappointment with still showing up as your best self every day at work? Like, how do you balance all of that? Because I know, I mean, life is, you know, it's ups and downs. Yeah. You have your valleys, you have your mountains. It's just, you, you just get through it. And so I have a very strong faith. I have a very okay. strong faith. Yep. And I, I, I think a lot on the scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Okay. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. Uh, plans to give you hope in the future, plans for you to prosper. I mean, there are good things in there. Yeah. So I know there's a good plan for my life, yep. even if something bad is going on right then. Uh, I tell myself often, bad things really do happen to good people. Sure. And sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel is a train. I mean, it's not always a good thing. Sometimes <laughs> it is a train. It I've is. actually never heard that phrase <laughs> before, but yes, you're dead right. I mean, sometimes it's yeah. ready to roll you over. But if you have a good support system and a strong faith, yeah. I do, right. I know that I'm going to get through it. I saw my mom go through a lot. Yeah. And so that instilled faith in me that, you know what? Bad things do happen to good people. But accept adversity and never give up. Some things came to pass. They didn't come to stay. Well, and I think what you also said there, too, is build a network around you to support you oh, yeah. when the train's coming, so to speak, right? It's the village because right. I have learned over my life I cannot do this alone. Yeah. I mean, even right now, I can't do it alone. There was no way I could walk into the Dallas Mavericks and do what Mark Cuban asked me to do. Yeah. He was very sincere about transforming the culture. And someone might ask me, she said, are you the person that Mark said is going to come in here? Are you going to save us? I said, I don't have the ability alone. <laughs> To save you, okay? Talk whatever. about an expectation to walk yes, into, Yes, whatever right? that means. But I do know there are people, and he said, bring in whoever you need. There are people I can bring in to help me, along with the people, the fabulous people that are in here. We'll yeah. do this together. And that's why teamwork is so important to me. Yeah. Yeah, because some days, you know, if somebody's down, somebody else is up. Right. And so it'll all balance. It'll all balance. We're all on the mountain. Yeah, we're all there. We're all, all right. there. Well, for our last question here. Uh, our last question? I know. What? Hey, time flies when no, you're we want an hour. Fun. An hour? Yeah, let's just start a talk Should we show. just do our own show? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, really quickly, um, would love to know something from you, something fun. It's a LinkedIn tradition, something not on your LinkedIn profile. It's not on my profile? we wouldn't know about you. 
Uh, let's see. I sat on Ronald Reagan's lap when I was oh. in the third grade. Okay. Okay, because he was the governor of California, and I got a chance to go and see him. So I think that's when my love of politics started right. a long time ago. And Nancy Reagan was there and all that. So I've been a little political person for a long time, except I'd never run for office. So okay. I just like it. I just like that's policy. a good one though. That we play this like game policy. a lot at LinkedIn, and that's yes. that's a very good uh, one. I know Ronald Reagan. I knew Ronald Reagan. All right. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for joining us in the studio, Cynthia. This has Thanks, been Marty. wonderful.